morning. I am Dr. Mustansa, and today we would be going through recommender systems, which is extremely important area and application of AI, and it is helping web giants to make loads of money. And I hope with this video you can get some flavor of recommender systems. Let me share my screen. I hope you can see my screen now. So let's start. OK, so recommender systems basically they are artificial intelligent assisted tool. I am Dr. Mustan sir and I am assistant professor. Um, let's open our discussion with a cup of coffee because this is a morning time and I can see a lot of you. They are like this and we want to make you like this one a big smiley. OK, and I hope coffee will give you a flavor to boost to that smiley. Who likes coffee by the way? Ah, Hannah. Good. OK, well, this talk is about Hannah and this is Hannah's childhood. Uh, she is a very cute kid, as you can see from the picture. And she is confused over the huge variety of the information and she is saying, hey, how to choose my taste? I want to have the my favorite coffee, but how I can choose the taste from millions of items over the web? And should I try each and every flavor and then adjust to one saying, hey, that was the right flavor I was searching for? No, you might have to wait 10 years for that due to the information overload. So the solution we propose is to use recommender systems. OK, they will help you to find relevant taste. And of course, this is not limited to coffee. This can be any item. OK, so Hannah use recommender system and it will help you to find your favorite taste. OK, without going into details, this is today's agenda. I'm going to talk about types of recommender systems. OK, which is collaborative content and demographic filtering. And then there's a concluding remarks as well. So recommender systems, they are basic, basically information filtering system which take users opinion, their taste, their ratings, their boards, their vices into account. And based on that, they build models. And based on the models, they can recommend you certain items or the resources you would be love to consume. You would love to watch. You would love to uh, buy certain items, so they are useful for you. They are interesting for you. There's a lot of applications area like Google ads. They recommend you relevant ads. Facebook and Amazon. They recommend you products. Netflix recommend you movies. YouTube recommend you videos. So the application spectrum is huge and they are gaining uh, a lot of intention nowadays. So basically, Recommender systems, they have two relevant uh, entities. One is users, which is on the left hand side, and one is uh, item, which is on the left hand side, or right hand side. When we say user, we can take gender of the user, the age of the user, and we can recommend product to the group of users as well. And when we say item, we can take variety of information. It can be camera, a phone, or movie, are the partners in recent dating website because they if in the dating website they recommend you pro, uh, partners saying hey they they are similar to you so you might be interested in them um so when we say user user provide rating about items but this item rating is very complex assume the user is angry the rating pattern might go down. So there's a huge context behind this uh, rating pattern. Like if you're watching movie with some friends, you might give it uh, more rating, the location of the cinema and so on. So in this talk, I'm ignoring the contextual information. I am assuming we assume that the rating you have given is the actual rating, OK? So there is no context because this would be difficult to cope in one lecture. So recommend certain product to the user. 
and the user give us feedback saying, hey, I like this product, thumbs up, or thumbs down, I hate this product. And this user feedback, we take that into account as well. And in fact, if you go to like uh, Facebook and you hide any ad, they ask you why you have done that. So you want to take your feedback into account to you find those ads, okay? So when a new product comes, we have two kinds of information. One is the rating provided by other users to this product. And the second is the content, like the description of this item. For example, the focal length of this camera, the, the megapixel of this camera, the how it looks like, and so on. So based on these two kinds of information, we can recommend this to the active user, okay? And in fact, we can recommend the top end recommendations saying, hey, you will like this item and you would give it five star. You will like this camera and you will like it four star and so on. So this is just a snapshot how recommender system works. Now let's see the famous types which are the collaborating filtering, content-based filtering, and demographic filtering, okay? So I would be just touching them in this uh, lecture. So before that, um, in Amazon, they recommend you uh, items because you have purchased or viewed similar items. So this is also a kind of uh, recommender systems algorithm. I have written some blogs which you can read. Uh, let me show you at the end of the lecture. Uh, let's go to the first type, collaborating filtering. So in collaborating filtering, you have some active user. The user, you want to recommend something, okay? And you have a group or the community of user, which can be very diverse. It can have a you, it can have the different age and genders and different demographics. So in the first step, we find the similar users to the active user, which are also called neighbors of the active user, okay? And based on these neighbors opinion or the votes, we can, we can predict how active user will like or dislike a certain item. And in fact, to find the similar users, you have the profile of each user into the database as well, okay? So based on these, we can make some uh, similarity, let's assume vector similarity and so on and find the uh, find the similar users. So again, uh, you have an active user and from the group of users, you find similar users, which are called neighbors. And from these neighbors, you take their votings into account and make some prediction based on the aggregate or the majority opinion. And to find the similar user, you have their profile in the database and you can match them easily. So from here, you have that you have a user profile, you have an item profile, and you have a rating matrix, okay? So usually this is like this one. You have user on one side, item on other side, and you have a matrix where you have the ratings, okay? So these are the building blocks of recommender system. Usually user have a lot of users, okay? User one, user two, and whatever. Item has the similar many items, item one, item two, and so on, okay? And this user into item rating matrix is really big. There's a lot of uh, missing. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> There's a lot of missing uh, entities in uh, these building blocks. So let's let's take some examples. So assume after your graduation, you go to Netflix, and they ask you to build a recommender system for them. Okay, they ask you to build a recommender system for them, and uh, we want to see how a user is going to like or dislike a certain movie. So assume they give you these data sets. They say, hey, we have four users. So these are the users. Uh, John, John, Annie, Ellie, and Julie. And they say they have uh, five movies, okay, items. And 
they have certain information as well where <clears throat> the rating scale is equal to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so ten is excellent and one is pathetic okay so if for example john has given titanic 10 mean uh, john likes this movie and triple x eight somehow he likes this movie julie has given one to titanic so she hates this movie so this is this is the data they have given you and they want you to build our recommender systems using collaborating filtering and they want to know how john is going to rate the god okay how john is going to rate the god so in the in the first step of collaborating filtering which is also called user centric uh, collaborating filtering you find group of users who have rated target movies so here you can see uh, annie ali and julie they have rated this item so you take these item which is the community of users so these are the community of users now you want to find the similarity of user these user with john okay so you want to find similarity between john and annie between john and ali and between john and julie okay you want to find these similarities and to find similarity between them you can see the john's profile is this one okay so this is a vector uh, 10 10 8 okay so this is john and the annie's profile is 10 10 9 so to find similarity between them you can use any vector similarity vector similarity usually we use pearson correlation because this is much richer okay pearson correlation this is much richer uh, uh, similarity measure. So, as I said, you find similarity between John and Annie, uh, John and Ali, John and Julie, okay, based on these profiles. So, how you find similarity between them? There is a very famous measure which is called Pearson correlation, which is just here, okay. So, this is the formula where uh, I'm not going into detail about that, but uh, you, in numpy you can simply say correlation coefficient and it gives you the similarity between them for example this is the code to find uh, similarity between a and b where they are the vectors and the similarity between them is uh, minus 0.57 so the output of this is between minus one to plus one where plus one mean highly similar, zero mean not similar, and minus one mean highly dissimilar. Okay, so Pearson correlation gives you much richer information because it gives you dissimilar users, highly similar users, and not similar users. So based on this measure, similarity measure, you find similarity between John and Annie, and it turns out to be one. You find similarity between John and Ali, and it turns out to be 0.5. You find similarity between John and Julie, which turns out to be minus 0.8. Okay, so they are very similar, and John and Annie they are highly dissimilar. Okay, on the last step, you you take the words of the respective user, like you take the word of John and uh, Annie and multiply it with the similarity of uh, John and Annie. So what do you what do you do? You take you take similarity between John and Annie. Okay, so this is the similarity between John and Annie, and you multiply it with the rating given by Annie. You take similarity between Ali and John. Okay, Ali and John, and multiply it with a rating given by Ali between John and Julie, and multiply it with a word given by Julie. Sorry, here. And you divide it by some of the similarity, and this is more like a normalization factor, so not very important, but we use it. Uh, 
it makes sure that the range of uh, output is usually between one to five. And of course, this is a normalization factor. But the most important thing is you find the similarity between the active user and all the user, and then multiply the opinion or the ratings of those neighbors with their respective similarity. And you add them, you add them, okay? So once you will do that, you will see the, uh, you plug in the values, you will see the prediction is 7.5, 7.5. So this is not very surprising that this is 7.5 because the other users which are similar to, to, to uh, John, for example, Annie, she has given this 10. So 7.5 is pretty close. And the users which are not very similar, Julie was highly dissimilar and she has rated it as a one. Okay, so this is quite opposite. So 7.5 mean John is going to like this movie. Quite simple, as you can see, collaborating filtering is a brilliant algorithm. And it is extremely simple, but very powerful. Now, uh, a related algorithm is item-based collaborating filtering. This is quite uh, similar to item-based, ex except now we reverse the matrix, okay? Now, what you do, you find similarity between the guard and different items. So you find similarity between the guard and Titanic, the guard and the proposal, the guard and triple X. Okay. And then you multiply the similarity with the respective weights. So everything is the same. Uh, in other terms, we find similar items to the target item. Okay. We want, we want to find the items which are similar to the god and then multiply those items with these weights, add them and make the prediction. I'm not going into details, but you can figure this out yourself that this is exactly the same apart from you just uh, take the transpose of the matrix. So this is highly powerful algorithm. Uh, item-based collaborating filtering. In fact, Amazon was using it a couple of years back. If I'm not wrong, in 2005 or seven, they were using much simpler version of item-based collaborating filtering. So this explains the power of collaborating filtering. It's very scalable. It's more accurate than user-based collaborating filtering. So I am pretty sure you would be getting more and more flavor of collaborating filtering in coming lectures, but the idea is they are very, very powerful. On the plus side, they are simple algorithms and they use wisdom of crowd. Like as you can see, you have a couple of peoples and the votes of individual does not count, but if you combine them, it becomes very powerful. So it's a social intellectual, uh, social filtering of the words and they give high accuracy recommendations. Their accuracy is really high. But in sparse data where you have a lot of missing values, okay, if you have a lot of missing values, the accuracy of those matrices might uh, suffer. In those settings, in sparse settings, you usually switch to second type, which is content-based filtering, okay? So now let's go to the content-based filtering. In the context based filtering, you go to the content of the item. Like uh, in coffees, you see the bean quality, the, their quantity. If this is a movie, you go to the genre of the movie, the actor and actresses of the movie, the reviews of the movie, the tags of the movies. And based on those, you build profiles. Okay, and then you can use different classifiers like K nearest neighbor, sport vector machine, neighbor base, and so on. And then you can recommend or predict any item you want to. Uh, in Amazon, you might have seen similar item scenarios and they might be using the content-based filtering for that. So let's take an example. So here is a user, Hannah, and she wants to see how, uh, uh, and we want to build some system for that. 
and he has rated certain items movies okay so the movie one contains romantic horror kara knightley item 2's description is hollywood drama and julia roberts item n is emma watson tom hardy and it's an action movie we feed hannah's profile into machine learning model and they capture certain latent information of hannah on um, let's assume there's a new movie target item which contains the description of that item contains emma watson drama and sci-fi okay and we want to see how hannah is uh, going to react to this movie so we feed this to the classifier now classifier based on these two make some fancy matching and mathematical models and they can recommend it so what do you think is going to like or dislike this movie from here you can see hanna is going to like it because it contain emma watson and somehow hanna likes emma watson it's a drama and she likes dramas so you get the basic idea that uh, machine learning classifiers they capture the important features uh, textual features and then they can match it somehow of course this is not that simple but this give you some flavor of that and of course in actual machine learning you convert them strings sorry strings you convert them into some numeric values okay plus uh, numeric values plus 1 plus 5 minus 6 and so on and then you feed them to machine learning classifiers so actually this is much uh, complex as compared to how i have explained or somehow you get the basic idea advantages and disadvantages of collaborative filtering you can explain the recommendations as well like here we can explain to emma that to hana that why she has been recommended this movie okay because uh, uh, it contains emma watson and you like emma watson but the negative side is usually it's difficult to get meaningful features uh from the data like from the multimedia data it's not easy to uh, capture the information like speech and so on so it's it's hard to capture this information the last type is the demographic based recommender system which is quite easier assume you have these items okay in the database and this is especially uh good for retail websites like grocery website as uh, and walmart and tesco uh, assume there is a couple of users and two users they have similar features so what it analyzes that there is a user who likes item c but this item has not been seen by similar users so why not recommend this item to this user as well okay so you somehow get the idea that if there are user who have same features why not recommend each other's product to them so here in this case both are male in their 20s so if this is a t-shirt as you why not recommend this to this guy as well so this is just an example but of course in the actual framework demographic might include postcode gender information age it might contain uh, the certain college they go uh, and cer certain other taste they share and of course they can be done for the items as well for example in the movie case certain movies they are romantic okay so romantic is more like a demographic feature of movies and so again in demographic based filtering system you use certain demographics of users and items and based on that you can recommend to different users certain products okay so that's it i think we have done today's lecture so the first type is collaborative filtering of uh, which take the users community into account or the items community in case we are working with item based collaborative filtering content based filtering they take the content of the information and they build some machine learning classifiers demographic take users demographics like age location and so on and in actual framework they build hybrid recommender systems 
which is the combination of all of them. So I hope you get the basic idea of a recommender system. Now a relevant question is, for example, uh, which algorithm is being used, let's assume, by Amazon? So a couple of years back, I was uh, with a discussion uh, with Amazon guys, and I came to know that they are using different kinds of information, like uh, they are using collaborating filtering, the content-based filtering, they are using SVD, metrics factorization. So they are combining all of them somehow in the traditional algorithms, and then they were recommending it because this is more plausible to explain if you use these kind of uh, applications, algorithms. And one of their group, they were working on neural network and advanced algorithms like reinforcement learning. So they have two groups. One group is working on advanced algorithms because in advanced algorithms, like in neural network, it's hard to explain why you have been recommended certain item. Uh, and the other group is working on the conventional algorithm, but they are combining in, combining it somehow. So I would give one more lecture some other time about Amazon and what are the pitch drawbacks of Amazon recommender system, and you will get more idea about that. Thank you very much. And these are the books. I would be recommending to read this book because this is really good machine learning book. Collective intelligence is good as well, and this is advanced. So this is the preferences you should be following. And the PDF of this is available as well. OK, you can download uh, is as well. Thank you very much, and please keep safe. If you have any question, please let me know, and I would be happy to help. OK, thank you very much, and see you next time. Bye bye.